This, my fellow Bond fans, is the Aston Martin DB10, and there will only ever be 10 of these examples in the entire world, including number 10, which we're going to drive. It's the first time in the 24 film Bond franchise that Aston Martin has designed a car from scratch. Previously, Bond cars were based on series production models. Aston Martin has a long history of supplying Bond cars, dating back to the 64 classic Goldfinger when Sean Connery drove the iconic DB5, one of the most beautiful Astons ever designed. Drop dead styling, simple lines and a grill to die for characterise the DB5 more than any other car of its day. And according to Marek Reichman, Aston's Director of Design, that's the car that provided creative inspiration for the DB10. It may not be a production model, but rest assured, the DB10 is a window into the future design language of Aston Martin's road cars. And for me, that can't come soon enough. They built this car in just six months. Usually it takes several years to design and build a new car. Its underpinnings are V8 Vantage S, but the DB10 is slightly longer and gets a massively wide track. In fact, almost as wide as Aston's 177 supercar. And that's something I love about this DB10. Get a load at some of the detail back here. Lacquered carbon fibre rear bumper, anodised exhaust tips, slimline rear lights and hidden brake lights up here that are so vibrant. And of course my favourite piece, this ducktail. Quite aggressive, much more aggressive than the old Vantage. Let's hope it all makes it into the new one. The whole car is carbon fibre over a bonded aluminium chassis. And these diamond turn wheels, they were also created exclusively for the DB10. What I find most interesting are these bonnet vents, or at first glance, lack of. But I can assure you they're here in the form of those beautifully machined holes to extract the heat. Now it was done that way to keep the whole front of the car clean and simple. Again, harking back to the DB5. And check out these massively wide Pirellis, 305s down the back, 255s up front, and that helped stunt driver Mark Higgins slide the car around on the car chase scenes in Rome. The grille's more aggressive than most previous Astons, shark-like for extra menace, according to Reichman. Now that's also because James Bond in the Spectre movie is a lot more predatory than he has been in previous movies. Well inside, it's a massive departure from anything Aston Martin has ever done before. It's a lot more clinical, again, like the predatory nature of Bond in the latest Spectre film. I really like this flat bottom steering wheel. There's a whole bunch of buttons and switches here, which I don't know what they do, but it all looks very fighter plane style, including this instrument panel ahead of me. What I really like though, is this attache case here that also serves as a glove box, and when you pull up to your meeting, pull it off, away you go. Well, this is the bit I've been waiting for. Now this is in Rome. And the interesting thing is, this one is a manual, so it looks like, yeah, James Bond prefers manuals and automatics. <laughs> Driving James Bond's car! Under the DB10's bonnet is Aston's tuneful 4.7 litre V8 engine. And in the movie Spectre, James Bond claims it will do 0 to 60 in just 3.1 seconds. Thing is though, super spies don't always tell the truth, it, it goes with the job. So let's just test his performance claims. Yeah, this thing's quick, but it doesn't quite feel 0 to 60 in three seconds quick. That's because Bond is fibbing. The engine in this car has the same 430 horsepower as in the normal V8 Vantage S, which means 0 to 60 takes 4.8 seconds. So yeah, Bond won't be able to outrun evil henchmen if they're in a Porsche 911. 
One of the things you might have noticed, which is the downside of this car, is that it's rather noisy inside. It hasn't got much sound insulation on it because obviously it's a movie car, it's a prototype. And that means that when you're driving along, yes, you can hear all those explosions and gunshots. Another problem I have with this car, the buttons on the steering wheel don't appear to do anything whatsoever. There's something that looks like a missile control or something down here, this little pad. And what about the boot, I hear you ask? Well, it doesn't even open. Also, the DB10 fails the car by a big bottle test. How embarrassing. Finally, there's a small matter of attainability because only 10 DB10s have been made and eight were used for stunt purposes in the film. So there's only two, well, untouched prototypes left and only one of those will be sold and that will be sold at auction probably for, well, an unreasonable amount of money.